Hello there. Today I'm taking a look at a wine from uh, one of the world's leading Riesling producers, Egon Muller. Um, and Egon is famous for producing Germany's most expensive wines. His Trockenbeer and Auschlosers will sell, if you can find them, for sort of fifteen, twenty thousand dollars $20,000 a bottle. Um, even his uh, cabinets, all these wines from the um, fabulous Schatzhof Berg Vineyard in the Tsar, um, the cabinets will sell for $140, $180 a bottle that sort of depending on vintage of course whereas the the wine we're looking at today Chateau Bella a wine he's involved with making in uh, Slovakia um, will sell for between 20 and 25 dollars a bottle um, and this is the 2019 vintage we're looking at um, so how did Egon Muller from the Tsar Valley become involved in making this wine in, in Slovakia um, it turns out that his wife Valeska um, her family, um, she was related to the Ullman family, who were industrialists in the early 20th century in um, Slovakia, and um, they had this this beautiful estate, um, Chateau Bella, but had to had to leave it in 1945 when they um, emigrated to to uh, Switzerland because the the communists were taking it taking over, and the communists seized the estate and, um, I, frankly ruined it really. Um, they turned it first of all into a prison and then later into a chemical factory and I'm afraid all the, um, all the beautiful original detail of the house was, was lost during these processes. So fortunately however in, in 2000 the Ullmans were able to, to buy the estate back from the, um, from the authorities and, and set about restoring it and uh, in 2008 they opened it again as a um, as a luxury hotel, a sort of a, um, a very private retreat for the rich and famous, um, and it's it's a beautiful setting. Um, but it's an area where grapes have always well have grown since the Romans planted them. So there's a long history there um, on the sort of fertile soils down towards the Danube um, in this southern part of of, of um, Slovakia. Um, and also named on the label, along with Egon as a winemaker, is, is someone called um, Miroslav Petrich. Um, and it turns out that when Egon first was asked to look and see what the potential for making wines here was, he went and he saw Miroslav and, and, the, and the work that was being done there and actually found that these um, fantastic wines were being made but were being bottled in um, plastic soft drinks bottles because that was all they had. So there's a wonderful story of... Um, sort of rebuilding here in terms of uh, quality both with the chateau and with its its wines um, so let's have a look at the wine shall we um, first thing to say we've got uh, a lovely pale color there it's um, really more green than yellow might be a yellow hint 14% um, alcohol um, and it's quite readily forming um, tears on the glass there um, so let's have a look at the aromas the aromas are restrained and initially there's quite a saline note but as you as you sniff more the, there is a minerality quite in there it, but um, behind that there's a, a quite a an intense note of waxed lime it's quite pungent really um, but it, it takes a little while to reveal itself um, so let's have a taste the wine style is dry. Oh, I suppose that's not surprising if you've got 14% alcohol in there. All the sugar will have been fermented. There's a crispness, there's a real limey, fresh, steely, toothsome acidity. It's really making my mouth water. It's really boosting that sort of limey flavour on the sides of my mouth there. And there's a minerality coming through as well. There is a slight creamy mid-palate there. Maybe there's a little bit of... Um, Lees has been used to round that out. The alcohol is 14%. It doesn't seem, um, it doesn't seem that hot, or um, the alcohol's not intruding into the flavours because there's such a concentration of that beautiful um, sort of waxy lime note, um, and maybe there are slight, slight toasty notes on that lime as well as it. Just the beginnings of bottle development. I mean, this is a wine that quite clearly, with that sort of acidity and that concentration of fruit, you could age for at least a decade and probably longer. Um, it's dry acidity, 
drying dry notes and its acidity um, enable it to cut through things. I mean, I've had this paired with uh, beautiful oily smoked salmon, and it's a fantastic combination because the the oiliness is cut through, and the the oiliness brings out the um, sort of citric notes of, of lime um, that the wine exudes. Um, so, I think well worth having a look at um, uh, Chateau Bella's. Um, Rieslings. Um, they're not in the same style as the Tsar Rieslings from um, the Schatzhofburg because they, they don't retain their sweetness. But they do have a, a real assurance, a concentration. Um, they're incredibly well made, beautifully balanced, powerful wines that will last um, and will develop in the bottle in, in, immeasurably. So um, thank you very much for watching. Um, I hope you found this interesting. Uh, do please sign up to follow us. Um, do like and share, and I really hope we'll see you again. Bye now.